Hello, I'm Bernie Wall and I'm an IELTS trainer and today I want to turn my attention to listening and this is the third in my video series about addressing the top 10 questions um, in each of the parts that I get asked by students. So today I want to talk about listening and the top 10 listening questions. So I hope that um, the answers will be of use to you and that they will help you to improve your own listening. So let me get the questions up and then we'll go through them one by one and I'll give you some answers and advice on what to do about these topics. Okay, so I'm looking at the byline there, making sure you don't miss anything. I think this is the biggest issue with listening, that it's very easy to wonder. And it happens to me if I'm doing a listening with students. It can happen that suddenly my mind wanders and I've missed two, three questions. And you really do need to guard against this. Um, and one of the ways is to make your listening very active so that by using the time you're given before the questions, and that's done for a reason, it's given to you so that you can be prepared and ready to anticipate the information you need to answer the question. So by being active like that, it helps you to keep focused and not to drift away and miss a question. Okay, let's start then with the first question, which is a question I get asked again and again. Whenever I ask students what are the issues with IELTS listening, um, I would say 95% of them bring up multiple choice questions. It's a lot to try and process. You have the question and you have the choices. And what a lot of students do is analyze the question, analyze the choices, and then try and carry everything in their head to go when the listening starts. And it's just too much. You can't remember all those things and it will just create confusion. So the best way is to focus just on the question itself or what we call the stem. So that's the bit at the top. And within that stem, there will be one word which should be able to trigger the answer. Now, the word could be a name. It could be a, a word like how or why or what. It could be um, a number. It could be any number of words. But it's the thing that you're going to be looking for primarily. And just underline that one. And then that's the word you take with you into the listening. So unlike the reading where you need lots of keywords, with the listening, you really only need one, maximum two, to unlock the answer. So as you listen, listen for that one word that you've chosen. And then as soon as you get that word, then start looking at the choices. And as you listen, um, choose the one that's correct. There'll probably be a couple that are similar. And if you have time and it jumps out, then you're fine. If not, just mark those two because maybe if you can't find the exact answer, you might be able to work it out later. But try not to try and remember too much when you go to the listening phase. Okay, this is another question that people often ask is where you've got two or three people. Um, and it can be difficult if you're distinguishing different voices. One way is to keep practicing listening to things with different voices. So not just IELTS listening, but outside of IELTS. Try and listen to discussions. So if you go on to, um, say, the BBC site, listen to interviews, listen to discussions with more than two people. Um, so try and get exposed to listening to multiple voices. That's one thing to do. Secondly, at the beginning of the section, it will give you a little bit of information about who you're going to listen to. So you, it will say something like a tutor with two students or whatever. So you should know before you start the listening a little bit about what you're going to hear. And then again, like the first one, pick out a keyword. And that keyword will probably explain who is going to be speaking. So as soon as you hear that people, person speaking, then you know that the information is going to be 
about them and you can find it from what they say. They should be what we call markers. So I was doing a listening today with a student with three speakers plus a tutor. And as the tutor introduced each of the three students, then the information relating to that student was in the question. So we were waiting for, and now, what about you, John? Um, how are you getting on? So these kinds of things can help you get ready for that section. So look for these kind of markers and they should help you. Okay, the same is true of the map. Firstly, when you get the few seconds to analyze it before the listening starts, have a look at the map and first of all, is there a point at which it starts? Does it tell you where, it, where you are or where it's going to begin? Um, see if there are any similarities. For example, if it's a map of a place, um, are things grouped in a certain way? I remember seeing one about a university campus where all the classrooms were, the teaching rooms were in one area, the social areas like cafes and um, restaurants were in one area. See if there are any patterns like that. Um, then as you listen, again, look for markers, because if it's somebody who is explaining where to go or giving you a guide on where to go, they may sing, say things like next or now we'll move to or now go to. So listen to these markers again to try and keep yourself oriented on the map. Um, if you miss something, you just got to let it go. Just let it go and keep moving because if you stay looking for something you'll miss the rest of it so it's as important to know when you've got something as it as it is when you've missed something uh, and that's true of the whole listening if you've missed a question you have to just let it go and move on or the danger is you'll miss another three okay so orientation and markers right this suggests to me, this question, that you need more practice with listening. Because if you cannot keep up with the listening, then it suggests that you're not ready to do this kind of IELTS listening. So you need to do a lot more listening practice. Um, and the best way to do that is to use stuff online, you know, anything from any of the news programs, uh, any any kind of program or just get a course book and the listenings in course books are graded so that they're going to be a little bit slower and then as you get further along in the levels they'll be a little bit faster so do try and um, do some more listening practice while you're doing your practice don't put yourself in test conditions all the time it's absolutely fine to listen twice or three times because you have to understand what the difference is between testing and learning and training. And learning in training involves listening more than once. So if you miss something, don't just go check your answers and say, oh, I only got 5.5. Listen again. The more you listen, the less you'll have to listen in the long run. And if you cannot discriminate these words, then you need to do more listening. So listen twice, listen three times, and try and get every single answer. And that's far more helpful than doing 10 listening tests and coming out with band six. So please make a difference between your training and the testing. Spelling is always important because it's part of the language. It's part of the accuracy. Now, I believe in the listening test that if there are words which are unusual and not common words, they, they will accept spellings that look like the right spelling. So if, you've, if you hear a word and it's a very unusual word and you don't know it and you try spelling it how you think it should be spelt, there, are, there is a high chance that that will be accepted. Um, any words that are commonplace and used all the time, this doesn't apply. So you should have pretty good spelling uh, in general for general language. 
So do be careful. If you're somebody who makes spelling mistakes with particular words and those words come in the test, you must check when you transfer your answers that you've spelt it correctly. But if it's a difficult word or one you don't know or an unusual word, just do your best and the chances are it will be acceptable. Okay, the same again. Certain types of question do, um, do need good grammar. So, for example, a gap fill, you must check the grammar. Or a short answer or some sort of um, summary. I know that's more common in, uh, in reading, but sometimes you get them in the listening. Um, and make sure that the sentence makes sense. So occasionally you may have to change a word. You may have to make it singular instead of plural, or you may have to make it a noun instead of a verb. With the listening, it will always be a simple transformation, not a difficult transformation, but it's your job to check and make sure that that sentence makes sense. So do address grammar. You don't need to worry too much as you listen, but when you transfer your answers, it's worth checking with those types of questions that you don't have to make any grammar adjustment. Okay, <laughs> this is a difficult one. I did have a student once who had this problem um, in space. She had a very big problem with panic whenever the listening started and also in the speaking. And she actually, um, she did some hypnosis actually, but she did also have other things to help her. Uh, if you're really, really suffering with this, then possibly you might think about some calming techniques that you can use. But for most people, unless you have a particular problem, for most people, I would say it's lack of practice. So if you feel panicky, it means you probably need to practice more listening to take that away so that you don't feel panicky. But if you do have a big problem, then it might be worth thinking about some techniques that you could use. And there's probably websites out there about um, re relaxation techniques for exams. Why not? Why not at all? You know, the more you do, the better you will get. And this is especially true of listening. Uh, many students I work with who do the listening, uh, you know, a lot, they get very high scores. And I'm talking, you know, 8, 8.5. Um, don't always practice IELTS listening. Just listen to anything and everything, songs, podcasts, news programs, ordinary programs. Be very careful about TV and movies because they are not really uh, listening practice in the, in, the, listen, in the English language sense of the word because a lot of it comes visually. So I would be looking more at radio programs, podcasts, rather than movies. Movies can only take you so far. They're fine for relaxation and why not use them? They're in English. But don't, don't use them as your only other form of listening. It's much better to use something that is audio only. Okay, um, test centers arrange their listening differently. Some use headphones, some just use speakers, uh, some are small rooms, some are big rooms. Uh, I think the best thing to do is to ask the test center, you know, how many candidates, how will the listening be delivered? If you have any kind of listening issue, um, if you have a hearing problem, um, it's probably worth talking to the test center. Now, in order to get a good um, situation close to the speakers, you may need to have uh, some sort of doctor's note, but it's probably worth doing if you do have a listening problem. If you don't have a listening problem, then just try and find out as much as you can about how the listening is arranged at that test center. Uh, and that may help you to understand how it's going to be on the day. Um, but other than that, there's not much you can do to, uh, to, you know, 
anything about this. There's not much you can do to improve this because at the end of the day, it's in the hands of the test centre. And our final question is about notes. Why not? I don't see why not. Just make sure you cross them out and they don't get to the examiner, but you'll be transferring your answers so it doesn't matter. Um, it's useful to write notes when you're not sure of the answer, but you hear something. And if it's quicker to write it in your own language, then that's fine. Or if you hear something and you can't quite hear the English word, but you understand it and you know the word in your own language, well, just write it down. Because when it comes to the transfer, you may be able to translate that and get the right answer. So I would just do anything that helps you get as many questions correct as possible. Um, so it's not a problem. Uh, just remember to translate it and not to write it on the question paper. That's all. Okay, so that was quite quick. I hope um, this helps. I hope some of those techniques are useful. But do remember, and I said this earlier and I'll say it again, there is a difference between training and testing. And what you're doing until you go to that test is training yourself. And just doing lots of tests is not the best way to train. So make sure you listen widely and you also, listen again when you need to so that you can train your listening skills, train your ear to pick up as much as possible. Okay, so that's um, everything about listening in terms of the questions that I receive. I have also written a blog post about this, which is on my website, IELTS Learning Tips, and there should be a link here for you to go over there. And there are a few other things on there that you can use to help you with your IELTS. So my last in the series is going to be about speaking. Um, so look out for that video when it gets posted. And uh, thank you for listening. And I hope that this was useful to you. Bye.